Down in that corner is my 2013 Mac Pro that after about six or seven years of heavy use, I am finally going to send it off into retirement. It is just not able to keep up with my workflow anymore. So I was really hoping to be able to hold out until, you know, the pro level M1 Max or M1X, whatever they're calling those Max to come out later this year. However, I just couldn't wait that long because uh, I got projects that are that are about to that are about to come up and I need to have a reliable editing machine that doesn't take years to render any kind of video. So I decided to uh, go ahead and get the M1 MacBook Pro with the 16 gigabyte memory, a unified memory upgrade and a 500 gig SSD inside of it. Now, full disclosure, this is really just a Bridger computer to hopefully hold me over until the pro level m1 max come out and if it can't hold me over i'll just go off and get a with the 27 inch imac or something and spec that out with all the gpu goodness and all that but i really wanted to see if this could kind of keep up and, and hold up for uh to, to the workflow and the codecs and stuff that i use mainly being blackmagic raw from the ursa mini 4.6k g2 the blackmagic pocket cameras and then also um now I can edit uh, the high efficiency HEVC uh, H265 codec from the 1DX Mark III, which pretty much puts every computer out there to shame because none of those computers can handle it, but this M1 Mac does a really good job of it. But I wanted to see if, you know, editing on a 4K timeline, 4.6K Blackmagic RAW or 6K Black Magic Raw, whatever the case may be, if this computer can can live up to the task, at least for the next few months until a more pro level machine comes out. So that's what this whole video is about. This this video is not a like full on benchmark thing. Like I don't game, so like those things don't matter to me. Those numbers don't matter to me, and. I'm not gonna do like Lightroom or Photoshop or, or anything like that because quite frankly, that, that stuff's not as important to me for, for video editing, honestly. I use Photoshop for thumbnails and that's about it. But mainly what I wanted to know is how it works with DaVinci Resolve using Blackmagic Raw and seeing how it works on a 4K timeline. So what I did is I actually went and got two projects from my Mac Pro that I just recently shot. One was a an hour long show. It was an HD timeline, but HD is still a common delivery resolution, at least right now for the next, I, at least I would say for the next year to be able to deliver to. So I used that, but it was an hour long program with a whole bunch of stuff and I'll go into that in a minute. And then another video was 11 minutes and 55 seconds long but it was a 4K timeline. It was just one of my YouTube videos that I just released. And it has a mixture of Blackmagic Raw and then some footage from Tommy Calloway that he sent me over, which was in a, an MP4 wrapper. So a different codex there, some B-roll, all that kind of good stuff. So the idea was to, to see how long it would take to render the same projects on my M1 MacBook Pro. Now, the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve is on the deliver page, it actually tells you how long it takes to render something out. So I just went into my Mac Pro and just jotted, jotted down how long the renders were for the hour long program, as well as the YouTube video, the 11 minute and 55 second video, just to kind of see how long those took. So I can kind of use that as a benchmark. Now I am benchmarking against this computer because that's what I've been living with for the last six or seven years. So. I just want to see how it works uh, improvements wise and everything and efficiency wise over that computer, not necessarily against the biggest and baddest computer out there. So the first project was an hour long program and this was rendered out into an HD deliverable. It was an HD timeline and it was rendered out to an MP4 wrapper. That's what the client needed. That's what they requested for their streaming platform. So um, that's what I used, MP4, all that kind of good stuff. But this program, although it was HD, had a lot going on in it. I had three talking head segments and I had four songs that we shot and edited. And each of those four songs had three camera angles at each time. And we did three to four takes per song. So for the songs, we're looking at a between a nine to 12 camera angle multi-cam edit. And then the talking head bits, we usually just had uh, two cameras running, an A cam and a B cam. And we shot all of it on 
uh, Blackmagic cameras, two Blackmagic Pocket 4Ks, and a Blackmagic Ursa Mini G2, both at their highest resolutions at eight to one compression, just to give you an idea of kind of what we were working with. And for the talking head segments, they're pretty standard, nothing really fancy with that, but we did have uh, some side thirds and lower thirds that really seemed to choke up both the M1 Mac and the Mac Pro with regards to editing, or with regards to rendering, uh, rather. So um, there's a lot going on in this project that even though it was an HD timeline, it was a really long project. And there was just a lot of stuff going on that, that both these computers just really didn't like. So anyways, enough blabbering about that. I think that's all the details that you need to know about the, the hour long project. But let's get into the juicy stuff, which is the render times of these projects. So this show on the Mac Pro to render took one hour, 39 minutes and 42 seconds to render. And on the M1 MacBook Pro, it took one hour and three seconds to render. That is pretty impressive to have a 39% improvement of performance over the trash can down there. Now, fully understand against like a fully spec'd out iMac or fully spec'd out MacBook Pro 16 inch, it, it probably would have taken even less time to do than the M1 Mac. But again, this is kind of a bridge computer. So keep that in mind. So uh, still 39% improvement. That's pretty impressive um, for seemingly a pretty entry level laptop considering the price tag and all that kind of stuff. So the next project was on a 4K timeline. It was a 4K deliverable. It was, it was a recent YouTube video of mine and it was 11 minutes and 55 seconds long. So on the YouTube video, it took 59 minutes and 21 seconds on the Mac Pro to render out an 11 minute 55 second video. On the M1 Mac, it took 12 minutes and 19 seconds to render. 12 minutes and 19 seconds to render an 11 minute 55 second video. That's pretty stinking awesome. Compared to the Mac Pro, that's like an 80% improvement. So um, that's just rendering. A rendering is all great and good, but like, what is like the, the, the editing experience like on this computer? So <clears throat> I'm over here, playback, proxy mode, I'm at uh, off, so not half recorded resolution. Uh, I'm not doing any like screen recording or anything like that, just because uh, I, I, I wanna show you like what the performance looks like with, with actually editing, not, I'm, I'm sure screen recording would kind of hurt the performance a little bit. So uh, we're at full resolution, no proxy or anything like that. This song, I guess I deleted from my downloads folder or something, so but that shouldn't really have an impact on it. So press play and immediately it just starts playing back. This is Blackmagic Raw from the Ursa Mini Pro G2 at 4.6K resolution and it's playing back no problem. My Mac Pro couldn't do this. So um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Um, so we're going through here. We'll skip over to some B-roll here. Um, you can see this is ProRes right here, plays back just fine. This is actually right here, H.265 from the 1DX Mark III, plays back no problem. So skip over here, and then we'll go into some more B-roll that I have. This is Blackmagic Raw, 120 frames per second, and it is playing back no problem at all. And this is at full resolution, like I said. And with Blackmagic Raw, it seems to render out on a 4K timeline, it seems to uh, render out 4.6K Blackmagic Raw at around anywhere between 18 and 20 frames per second, which isn't great, but compared to my Mac Pro that did it about three frames per second, we're, uh, we're, we're sitting pretty good with that. Now moving over here, this is uh, Tommy's little segment that he sent me, and this is in an MP4 wrapper. And this plays back still, no problem, um, full resolution. Uh, we're good to go there. The um, the cool thing though, that with this codec, uh, this rendered out at about 50 frames per second, as opposed to like four frames per second that I did on, on my Mac Pro. Didn't really matter what the codec was. It seemed like on my Mac Pro, it was if it was a 4K timeline and rendering out 4K, it was gonna render out at like three or four frames per second. So it was just absolutely an absolute atrocity waiting for things to render. So again, this could be way better. I know it's way better on some other computers that are way more powerful, but compared to my Mac Pro, holy crap, this thing is fast. So let's move over here to some Blackmagic 6K raw footage. Um, 
the system footage I have from back home with the Pocket 6K. So 6K Blackmagic Raw, sometimes it chokes up a little bit playing it uh, right off the bat, but it seems to catch up and now it's playing it natively, no problem. And this has just got a basic uh, LUT on here, just through the, the buttery natural Rec 709 LUT on here. And it's playing back fine. And honestly, this is mostly what I do with any footage. I don't do a lot of heavy grading or anything like that. Um, maybe we can throw some noise reduction on here just to see how things look. I have a feeling this will probably choke it up pretty good. Take some chroma. Let's do better, medium. And that definitely, definitely chokes it up big time. If I bump this to half resolution, let's see what happens. And I'm getting about 20, uh, it's kind of stuttering around 24 frames per second, but I'm not actually getting 24 frames per second out right here. But if I go to quarter resolution on 6K, then it plays back just fine with noise reduction, which my Mac Pro couldn't couldn't even do. I, not even a chance. So here's just some more Blackmagic Raw. Seems like when you jump into a new clip, it stutters for a second and it starts playing back smoothly. So um, again, this is 6K. Black Magic Raw, we're, we're not dealing with low resolutions here. So it does seem to stutter up a bit. I found with uh, 6K, I can just jump down to half resolution and no matter the clip, scrubbing, all that kind of stuff, I can go through no problem and play it off and it doesn't really stutter at all. Well, that's pretty much it. All I'm gonna talk about with uh, with this computer. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I'm not really good at computer reviews because uh, I just, I don't know enough about them. That's why I just kind of went with a Mac because usually you can just turn them on and you're good to go. But if you have a Blackmagic camera um, and you're, or, or, or if you're just adding Blackmagic RAW, what maybe you're from one of the other cameras and you're recording Blackmagic RAW to their, to their recorder. Um, good news is it plays it back pretty stinking well. And um, the only thing I've seen with, Blackmagic Raw is with the, the 6K Blackmagic Raw from the Pocket 6K. It does stutter a little bit, but if you drop it to half resolution, then you should be good. And monitoring half resolution 6K on a 4K monitor, you really can't tell the difference all that much. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful, useful, anything like that. Um, it's probably a pretty boring video. I'm really sorry. I'm surprised you're still here. But uh, if you are, hit that thumbs up, maybe hit subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. and. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the uh, computer or anything, let me know down in the comments below and I'll test whatever I can for you. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Love you and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.